Eric Ten Hag is a highly respected and successful football manager, known for his innovative tactics and ability to get the best out of his players. But what makes him a tactical genius? In this video, we'll look at how Eric Ten Hag has changed Manchester United since becoming manager. But first, let's take a look at his early years and success as a manager that led him to Manchester United. Eric Ten Hag was born on the 2nd of February 1970 in Harksbergen in the Netherlands. Eric Ten Hag played for boyhood club academy Bon Boys before moving to Twenties Academy in Enschede as he approached his mid-teenage years. He stayed at the academy until the age of 19 in 1989. He then moved to De Graafschap in 1990. Ten Hag played primarily as a centre-back and had his best career with De Graafschap and won Eerste Divisie in the 1990-91 season. Like some top football managers, the likes of Graham Potter and Bruno Lager, Eric Ten Hag had many years of little to no progress during his playing career. The Dutch waited for 10 years before winning another title. This time, the KNVB Cup with FC Twente in the 2000-2001 season. He retired from active playing in 2002 at the age of 32 while playing for Twente. He used the next 10 years of his life as an apprentice. In 2012, Ten Hag was appointed as manager of Go Ahead Eagles in the Eerste Divisie by Mark Overmars, who was a shareholder of the club. During his only season at Go Ahead Eagles, he led the team to its first promotion in 17 years. He coached Bayern Munich 2 from the 6th of June 2013 until 2015. During his time as manager, Ten Hag led his team to the region Allegra Bayern. Ten Hag then became the sporting director and head coach of Utrecht in summer 2015, where he led the club to fifth place during his first season. In the 2016-17 season, he improved FC Utrecht's final position to fourth, booking a place in the UEFA Europa League qualifiers. He then moved on to Ajax in 2017, where he had even more success. Under his leadership, Ajax won the Eredivisie twice, the Dutch Cup twice, and advanced to the UEFA Champions League semi-finals for the first time since 1997. In January 2022, he became the league's fastest manager to reach 100 wins with Ajax, achieving the feat in 128 matches. Ten Hag's tactical acumen is one of the reasons for his success. He's known for using a high press in order to force mistakes and create scoring opportunities. He also likes to use a possession-based style of play, which allows his teams to control the tempo of the game and dictate the play. Another key aspect of Ten Hag's genius is his ability to develop young players and turn them into world-class stars. He has a keen eye for talent and is able to nurture and cultivate the abilities of his players. Ten Hag's leadership skills are also exceptional. He has a great ability to build a strong team culture and create a positive atmosphere within the dressing room. Ten Hag has continued to show his tactical brilliance and player development abilities at Manchester United. After a rocky start in Manchester, Ten Hag has had to quickly adapt to the Premier League's rigorous schedule and physicality. He's slowly but steadily implementing his style of play with the players he currently has at his disposal. He's quickly becoming one of the few managers since Sir Alex Ferguson to restore the faith in the fans and balance to the team. He became the fastest Manchester United manager to reach 20 competitive wins, achieving the feat in 27 games. Let's take a look at what Ten Hag has done at Manchester United so far. He handled the Cristiano Ronaldo situation like a true leader, prioritising the team and his own philosophy over satisfying individual players. He stuck to his guns in playing Lissandro Martinez ahead of team captain Harry Maguire. Ten Hag has improved just about every single player from last season, 
with the likes of Diogo Dalot defensively, providing Luke Shaw with competition and getting Marcus Rashford back to his best. The new signings have also been integrated well and immediately, with Malassia, Eriksson, Casemiro, Anthony and Lissandro Martinez all playing a vital role to the team. And he rejuvenated the midfield. Casemiro has grown into his midfield destroyer role at the club and has been everything Manchester United could have bargained for, that missing piece to the puzzle in the Fred McTominay era. Defensively, Manchester United typically defend from the front in a 4-2-3-1 shape, with relative vigour and pressing intensity in forcing their opposition into errors. The introductions of Casemiro and Martinez have simultaneously helped with their speed and aerial presence in dealing with those longer passes. Martinez has been so exceptional that he's won close to 80% of his tackles and 70% of his defensive duels. Alongside Rolls-Royce Raphael Varane, the two have created a solid defensive partnership and supplement each other's ability. Martinez will often give himself a bit of a gap away from the nearest player to ensure that he wins the foot race, while Casemiro will nicely cover for out-of-position fullbacks and shift wide at the right moments. The Red Devils were often criticised for lacking a backbone, genuine heart and leadership in recent years, so this area has clearly improved and is building Old Trafford into a fortress once again. In attack, Manchester United builds out from the back in a 2-5-3 shape, with Bruno Fernandes floating low and looking to get on the ball in any openings of space. Sometimes building in a 2-plus-2 box quartet, dictating the tempo and flow of the match, as Varane, Martinez, Casemiro and Eriksen bounce passes back and forth to one another until the right opening. As the season has progressed, United have put more and more ball progression responsibility onto their fullbacks. It starts with Lissandro Martinez, who has many great on-ball qualities, but none might be more important than his patience. If a pass isn't there, he doesn't force it. He'll take his time, he'll walk with it a bit. That allows the fullbacks to tuck inside and find pockets of space to receive passes, turn and progress the ball up the pitch. This approach is more intentional and free-flowing than under previous managers, who are generally less patient out from the back. Casemiro, who's played more progressive passes than Fernandez and Eriksen, always looked to claim the ball from the defence and presents a calming presence whenever he's on the ball. Manchester United utilise their explosiveness on the break, where Bruno Fernandes' imagination can thrive, feeding creative passes into runners. Anthony has been introduced as a left-footed right winger, which has allowed for Diogo Dalot to push all the way up the pitch and get on his right foot down the byline, and a wide variety for attacking moves as they work overloads down the right. Luke Shaw himself has long been a powerful carrier of the ball and will join attacks to compound matters down the left side. Rashford has made for an excellent foil down the other wing or up front for his destructive out-and-out -out speed in behind. And the introduction of rising star Alejandro Garnacho, along with Sancho, Anthony, Rashford and Marshall, Ten Hag has a dynamic and interchangeable attacking line. In the world of football management, Eric Ten Hag is a genius. His tactical acumen, ability to develop young players, and leadership skills place him among the world's best managers. His impact on Manchester United, off the back of one of their worst ever seasons in such a short period of time, has been nothing less than impressive. If you liked today's video, please give it a thumbs up, and don't forget to subscribe. We'll see you next time.